broadcasting worldwide to every nation. This is the Gospel America Television Network. Broadcasting to every nation on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and online at gospelamerica.net. part three so glad to see you came back with me so today we're going to talk about our health inside inside health okay hey, you see what I'm doing I have my two little tennis balls I like to um, press down on them because they have points we have points they have points I'm always looking at a chart we have points under our feet that's really good for the different parts of our bodies and when you press down and you feel some tender spots, I always tell the ladies to press on it, press on it, press on it really, really hard until that spot feel like it's not so tender because it's connected to an organ, okay? So the outside of our feet here and all the way up here is our kidneys and our liver. So you just wanna just Roll it a little bit, roll it to the side. You can get a, um, a, a golf ball, a tennis ball, any kind of lacrosse ball, any kind of ball that you, you can put under your feet and find tender spots. That's, you really want to look for tender spots. And then if you get a reflexology chart, you will see what that spot is pointing to and then you know what you need to do regarding your health. So we're going to talk about what the kidneys do every single day and mostly at night okay so the kidneys job is to go around and just I'm just speaking going around and filter out all the stuff and it gathers it in and it pushes it out so how do we know our kidneys worked the night that we were sleeping and we wake up and our urine is clear kidneys didn't work. You cannot wake up for clear kidneys. That's a big no-no. I'm not telling you to be scared, but I'm telling you do some exercise. I'm telling you to, to um, eat, eat all kinds of fruit that's really filled with water and you don't have to drink that much water because you're going to be eating it. And exercise, 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 exercise. And then go when you go back to bed, in that one day, if your urine was clear the day before, it should have a little yellow tint to it. So you're gonna repeat that cycle. You're gonna make sure that you're not uh, dehydrated. You're gonna drink your water. You're going to eat your food, eat good food, no, no fast food, eat good food. This is your kidneys you're talking about. And you're gonna do that process all over again, okay? Because what you want to keep in your head is, I need to help my kidneys so I don't end up on dialysis, okay? And if you keep this routine up at, until you see some dark yellow urine when you wake up, you have done a good job. You need to applaud yourself. Now you know what you need to do. You go to your doctor. You get your exam. You, you can ask your doctor to run some tests on your kidneys to find out where your numbers are. And you want to get them as close to 60 as you can. Okay, so you can tell your doctor what you're doing. He's not going to like it because he probably want to put you on dialysis so they can make some money. I said that. Okay, so you're going to do that process until you get to where you're feeling how you're supposed to feel. And once you get the kidney stabilized, then you're going to work on the liver. Okay, so your liver is over here, kidneys over there, and they talk to one another. All right, so the liver has, um, a, a, yeah, 500 different actions that it has to perform every single day. It does not get a break. It does not get a break. So, and also in the kidneys, the, the anger sits in your kidneys. Okay, so that could, I'm sorry, in your liver. And that could cause a lot of problems. If you're always angry, check your liver. Always heat it up and, and frustrated and, and, and you, you just going back and forth and back and forth. Check your liver. 
there are different herbs that you can look up yourself. So I'm going to name you one that I really like, but you have to do the research because this is my body. That's your body. Okay. Milk this thistle and dandelion is really good for that. But you, I'm not telling you what you do. Talk to your doctor. Always talk to your doctors. Okay. Let's, let's talk about the doctors. I go to the doctor to tell the doctor what I want them to check for. I tell the doctor what blood test, this is what I want you to look at, okay? And this is what I want to report on. I don't just go to the doctor and say, oh, I came for my physical. No, I, they know when I come in there, I got a list of stuff that I want y'all to, to take care of so then I can get the reports and I can do what I need to do on my side because I don't take any medication, none whatsoever. So I'm, I'm not the type of person that's going to let a doctor just say, you got this. And this is, this is the end result for you. No, you're not God. You tell me what I have. Let me go work on it and clean it up. And then I'll come back and let you see that it's been taken care of. Okay? And I think if people did that more, they would be healthier. Because a lot of the medication that you're taking is for one thing. And then you got to end up taking a pill to handle the side effects from that. And then you end up taking another pill to handle the side effects from the first pill that you took. And then here we go with these other pills to handle the side effect, the side effect, the side effect. And then your whole body just like, wow, they putting some crazy stuff inside of me. What am I going to do? Get sick. Get sick. And, and, and your lymphatic system just go haywire because it can't handle all the different chemicals. And you start getting different little teens in your head that your doctors say, well, you got this infection, you got that. But look at all the stuff that they're giving you when you should sit down with your doctor, have a conversation with the doctor, tell them exactly how you're feeling. What can I do without taking a pill? Because a pill is not the answer for every single thing. So the doctor, most of the time, they're going to agree with you because they know that you know what you're talking about. And, and you're not going, they're not going to be able to talk you into something. So you want to be able to listen to your body. If you feel throbbing in your head, your pressure is way too high, way too high. You need to sit down, put your feet up or, or take a nice cool shower and bring down the temperature in your body so you can relax before you get a, a huge headache. Uh, a heart attack or something because the pressure is just too high. Then you're going to look at your life and say, what am I doing that my pressure is going up so high? What am I eating? What, what should I take off my plate and what should I put on my plate? Because food is medicine. Food is, is definitely medicine. And I, I, I just use my, my client that I have that I saw her on social media and she was getting chemotherapy therapy and I couldn't believe it because I hadn't seen her in, in a few years and there she was taking a picture in the hospital I'm like no we're not doing that so I call her up and she says oh yeah I have breast cancer and I'm I said so I'm gonna come see you so I go see her and I juice for her every week every week every Sunday I'm at her house juicing she's all the side effects gone the, the tongue turning black, gone. The constipation from the chemo, gone. She looked radiant every week. So she's on a, a vegetable fruit diet and grapes. So the grapes, the, I don't know why the, the um, cancer don't like grapes, but when doing the research and finding all these studies about there's something in the grapes that cancer just die. The, the cells, so she gets almost a gallon of grape juice, pure grapes that, that's juiced every week, and she has to drink it. Those are her snacks. Now she's on other fruits that she's able to eat. No sugar, because you got to have the natural sugar in your body and not the crazy sugar in the box. But a lot of times the, the breast cancer, you got to think about your life. You, 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 the right and the left, one is for the, the dad and one is for the father, I'm the mother, and you've been 
unhappy with them all your little life and that sits into your body and the Bible says that you must forgive or it will eat you up like cancer and I was like wow Lord they had way back then way back then you know and it's still today and doctors are saying that you must forgive people when you have cancer why didn't they tell people that years ago when people were just dying from it when, when there's a, a chemical mix that you can unmix and over a period of time you could become a better person and a healthier person are you serious doctors so let's move on let's go back to our liver and our kidneys and then we're going to talk about that gallbladder it's like they, the three little friends won't 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 that need to be in harmony with one another so that the liver can do its elimination of all the junk that it has to take care of and push it over to the um the gallbladder and it do what it has to do and push it over to the last person which is the kidneys and you don't want the kidneys to ever get stressed so you do your best to be a helpful helpful person with your kidneys so it can filter really good and push the rest out so you don't have backups in your body and today people eat all kinds of foods so you need to do good elimination like two to three a day so that you don't have backup it could back up in you and begin to poison your system and then you get all these different types of infections running around inside of you all these free radicals and you're feeling like you're tired all the time because your blood is, is sluggish that's because you're not having enough elimination so again I tell you you go to your doctor you tell your doctor how you're feeling you tell your doctor be honest and say I haven't gone to the bathroom regular maybe once a day and it's very talk short and I'm constipated and it's hard to do you got to be honest with the doctor so then they can tell you their opinion and then you do what you have to do but if you eat right and have enough fiber in your body and you exercise you have got to exercise that is so important you can't sit in front of the TV or sitting in a chair and say I got all this stuff around me these quick uh, equipment and I got weights and I'll get to it one day but your body is crying out for that resistance is crying out for you to go and take a, a walk or take a little skip or you know do something to get your heart rate up because when you get your heart rate up the blood can wash itself it get hot and it can be purified and then it all this stuff can come out of you if you if you exercise regularly and you realize uh, wow when I finish exercising and I sweat it out I go to the bathroom and I urine like forever you know why because all that toxin is coming out that's what you did you did a good job so you get a clap 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 you did a good job whenever you finish a, a serious workout and you go and you give you have a good tea that's good and it don't have to be any particular color because usually you're working out in the afternoon and by noon your urine is clear because there's nothing else to filter it's just clear it's working on for you to go to bed and go to sleep so it can do everything that it need to do and push out for the next day because it's like a car it's like a car you got to take care of your body just like a car I want you all to be blessed I want you to understand your body talks to you you if we just listen and when we get the first little crick we should say mm, what was that don't be don't be rigid about it or just hyper on it but that means something when your body talk or, or you wake up and you're really sore and you haven't been working out you need to stretch your body has, has just got all tight and the muscles is just wrapping around one another and they need to be pulled apart so you can have mobility and, and not stiff our hips we need to do a good stretching with the hilt and the pelvic so that if we were to fall say you're 70 80 years old and you stretching every single day when you fall you you most likely gonna bounce your bones not gonna break because they, they're not gonna be brittle and let's talk about these bones and what I'm telling you I really want you to look it up because God said I would not have you ignorant and he's not talking about just the word he's talking about for anything 
anything that concerns you, he will not have you ignorant. And everybody, I believe, have access to a computer or you can go to the library and you can research everything that I'm talking to you about. I hope you're taking some notes so you can go to your computer, research it and see that, oh, I thought my bones was hard, but they're actually soft and they actually shed. I didn't know that, but here it is, scientific. Some of science is true. It's good, you know, because you got the science and then you got God and you put them together and they become one. Okay, so I, when I learned that, I was like, what? I thought, I thought my bones was like cement, hard, but they're not. They're soft and they shed and new bone grow. So that, that tells you when you break a bone, it mends itself back together. And we never even think about it. They, we just break a bone, they put a cast on it, and we, and we don't think about how did this happen? That's like, wow, that's a, that's a wow moment. The bone actually come back together and say, hey, I know you. And it starts to become one again. And then it's all better. And you can't even see the break. Sometimes even on an x-ray, you can't see where the break was because it comes back together. And our body was designed to heal itself. So what are we doing? What are we doing? It's supposed to heal itself, not us having to do a whole bunch of stuff to heal it because we have to go back to in the Bible days. What did they eat? Because they surely didn't have the disease like we did. What did they drink? Yeah, they might have had some, some wine from, from grapes and they weren't all this hard alcohol that people drink today, the gin, the vodka, all of that. Most of the food came from the ground. You heard every now and then about a lamb. You didn't hear anything about a pig because we just didn't do that. Because pigs don't have pores and all that they eat from the ground. It, their job is to clean up the floor and all that disease stays in them. And I don't care what you do to them. It ain't coming out. It's in their blood. It's in their skin. It's, it's in them. And then you eat that. That's crazy. But to each his own. That's what I say. Arthritis, rheumatoid, arthritis, rheumatism, all of that, pig, okay? So do your research. Pay attention to what you're putting in your mouth. And if you want to be healthy, change your diet. Look up food is medicine and go through the whole process of looking at all the different foods that can heal different ailments in the body because that's why it was created. You know, the trees... The, 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 the flowers, some of the flowers is medicine. God just provided everything for us and we do not take advantage of it. You grow dandelion in your yard and you just cut them down. And, and, and if you think about it, you could go and, and find out how to take the dandelion, grind them up and make them into an herb and it heals your body. How about that? Some of this stuff just grows around us. And we don't, even, we don't even pay attention. But I'm telling you, the world is coming to a place where the food is just going to be totally garbage. And you're going to wish that you had taken the time to find out what I can eat from the ground. What can I grow? And so I'm not buying all kinds of stuff that's GMO, okay? Food that don't have any seeds in them is GMO, all right? It's modified. I call it clone. So when I look for fruit, I look for the seeds. I know it came from the ground because you can't reproduce seeds. Seeds reproduce seeds. End of story. Okay. Grapes, seeds, watermelon, seeds. And, and you see all these seedless grapes, seedless watermelon. And I think I saw seed, seedless apples. I think I saw that. To me, that's just crazy. Why do you want to grow all our food in a lab? What are you trying to accomplish here? You're trying to get rid of everything that God created? So you can say man did this? Well, man is a hot mess. Uh, it, you know, I'll say that again. Man is a hot mess. You're always trying to create something that's destroying something. Whatever God create, it helps you to live. So we need to go back to the ground. Stop the silliness. Stop having to want to eat this and want to eat that when it's not healthy for your body. 
Your body needs tenderness. Your body was not created to put a bunch of chemicals in it, a bunch of drugs that only make you sicker. It just makes you sicker. I've seen people bounce back from some horrific, horrific disease by going on a plant-based diet. And I just watched them and they just came back. Yeah, it took time. It took about maybe a year. In some, in some instances, it was a couple of years, but they stayed on point and they were determined that they were not going to die. They were determined they weren't going to put crazy stuff in their bodies and they made the choice. I'm going to go back to the ground and see what that gives me. And look at them. They're still around here today. And then when you talk to people about that, they look at you like you're some kind of weirdo that you just want to be, uh, you know, a vegan. I'm not a vegan. I don't think I am. Uh, yeah, I, I have fish every now and then, so I'm not a vegan. Uh, I love cheese, that, but I love my vegetables. I love my boiled eggs. And I, I just like to do what's good for my body because I didn't make it. I didn't create this. So it's on loan to me. This, this uniform that I have over my spirit is on loan to me, so what am I going to do with it? I'm going to do my best to whatever God intended for me to do with this body. I'm going to do my best. I'm not hung up on it, but I, I don't want it falling apart. I don't want my inside organs to just go crazy. And, and then I'm, I'm doing all kinds of pills because now I'm really sick, and because if I had done this over here, I wouldn't be so sick. I'd be okay, all right? So we're gonna do some pressure points now. My, my feet feel a lot better. I'm gonna take the same ball and I'm gonna rub it, roll it, and find some tender spots. Cause, so remember, this is your liver, okay? So if I have any tender spots, I know that my liver needs a little work. And that's okay because Nothing works good all the time, and that's what people need to understand. Nothing works good all the time. And if your car needs repair, it starts coughing and looking funny and acting funny, and you take it to the shop, and they tell you what's wrong with it, and you fix it. So can we do the same with our body? It's a vehicle because it carries us. We don't float around. We walk, okay? You get in your car, your car don't just float through the air. You drive it, got four wheels. And we have two wheels, okay? So we're gonna do better. We're gonna do a lot better. And I, I want you, I want you to take another look at your, yourself and say, I'm more than what I see, so I can do better. Don't wait for somebody to do better for you. I can do better. I can eat better, I can live better, I can love better, I can talk better. I can be better understanding about other people because that's healthy for you. That's really, really healthy. And, and you're gonna find people that will have an issue with how you handle your life and you're always uh, happy or semi-happy, you know? Because I, I don't want you to think that every day you wake up and it's, it, you're in la-la land and everything is beautiful. And uh, that's a TV show, probably a reality show. <laughs> it ain't real. You don't wake up like that every day. You make a choice every day on how you're going to walk through the day. And yes, something might come and you have a hiccup. That's okay. That's okay. My mind says I have a choice on how I'm gonna deal with it. And that's another thing that we, we have to understand that we make the choice on, on how our days, our weeks, our months go. We make the choice. Nobody makes a choice for, and God don't make the choice for you because you have free will. Make the choice to have a loving life. Make the choice to have a healthy life, okay? And, and if you're working hard all the time, you need to make the choice to sit down and do nothing. Just sit, put your feet up, you deserve it. Have a glass of water or have a smoothie, have some iced tea, you know? And, and just chill because you don't need to be busy all the time because your body gets tired. I know when my body gets tired, I don't feel like even thinking, and I just want to sit. So I go and I sit. I've dedicated one day a week after I finish my work. I'm, I go to the sauna and the steam room, and I'm there for at least an hour and a half. 
going back and forth, back and forth, scrub down, relaxing. When I feel that I calm down, then I lay down and I chill and I drink a lot of water. And, and I just, it's just me and God. It's like we have this standing date every Wednesday and nobody ever come in there, but every now and then I say, Lord, whoever you want to come in here to have a conversation with me, let them come. Otherwise, and you know, it works every time. If somebody come in, we have a good talk about the Lord and then nobody comes in and then I'm there by myself and it feels really good. And I, I feel like I just unloaded all the toxin and the stress from the week before. And I took time, just me and, me and the Lord, just to lay before him and do nothing. When you do that consistently, God begins to talk to you. You start getting ideas how to do something better. That's, that's because you took the time to say, this is a special time this week, same day, same time. I let nothing interfere. 3.30, I'm headed to the gym. That's my time. And nothing ever interrupts me because I say, nope, can't do it. This is what I do on Wednesday. So I make an appointment with God and I show up. We always want him to show up. So why can't we show up? Why can't we just go and let him talk to us sometimes instead of us blabbing to him because we're always needing, we're always hurting, we always, somebody did this, or we always need something, a uh, financial blessing or some healing or some something. But why can't you just go and lay before him and just let him talk and need nothing and want nothing? Just say, Lord, here I am. Spend some time with you. Choose a place that you can go where you're not gonna be interrupted. No phone. No phone, no phone, no laptop, no cameras, no lights, <laughs> just you and the Lord. Spend time with him. Even if you just go in your backyard, just be outside of your house. Get a lounge chair and just sit out there. If it's summertime or if it, the weather is nice. Or don't go where people are because you don't want to share him. Find a time that you don't have to share him with anybody and just live that moment. And I'm telling you, he'll start meeting you. He'll start having conversations with you and you'll start wanting to be there because you know he's gonna meet you, okay? I want you guys to be blessed. Honor yourself, honor yourself. You are somebody special. You are a great person. So honor yourself, be good to yourself. Acknowledge who you are. Know your self-worth and carry your life accordingly, okay? I love you as much as you love me. I don't know you. I haven't seen you, but I love you because that's what I'm called to do. And when, if I ever meet you, I will feel that love coming from you and me and joining together as one. Be blessed. Be understanding of the people around you. Know your surrounding and take some time. Check your body. Learn how to talk to your body when it talks to you. Food is medicine. Utilize it. Utilize it. Okay? I love you, and I'll see you next time. But next time, we're going to be rocking. You're not going to have no sit-down time. This is it. I love you. Talk to you soon. Bye.